So Jill, uh, you were in Biloxi, Mississippi at the time. How different was your experience? And do you think politics had anything to do with that difference? I think there was great debate, of course, Mississippi being led by a Republican governor and Louisiana being led by a Democratic governor at the time um, caused some great debate. But in my heart of hearts, I believe much of the, the reactions to Hurricane Katrina came with experience level. Um, governor Barber had dealt with hurricanes, Ivan, I could go on and name a dozen of them probably. Um, we all know that in elementary school we practice for fire drills, right? Everybody's done the whole stand in the, you know, stand in the playground waiting for the fire department to come and it doesn't take a fireman telling you to leave first. A hurricane evacuation and hurricane preparedness falls under the same um, philosophy or it can or it should. Um, some of it is personal responsibility. Some of it is what our leaders learned from the last time they evacuated or the last time they led such an effort. And Governors Blanco and Mayor Nagan had no experience evacuating a city. So whether that had to be a result of Democrat versus Republican, I believe that much more of it had to do with experience level. I believe that's true, um, but I also believe that having a Democrat um, as a governor and a Republican as a president caused a great deal of conflict. And it seems like um, even in his memoirs, um, President Bush said that he was hesitant to send troops into um, New Orleans because he didn't want to step on Governor Blanco's toes. Now. You know, I know I've used ridiculous already here, but that just merits that word again. Um, there, there just, um, there's no reason for that when we have a national disaster, not a state disaster, to think about stepping on people's toes. And I mean, that was what was said in his memoirs. I think um, one of the things that I have read and I think I agree with is that leadership lacked competence from the federal, from the president on down, the, a lack of, uh, of competence. And one of the things that uh, I discussed with former Governor Blanco was this whole issue about the federalization of the National Guard because I wanted to understand that better. Because Bush does talk about that in his book too. It seems that they spent days trying to decide up in Washington whether or not they would federalize the National Guard rather than just sending in the military. Big difference. Federalizing the National Guard, according to Governor Blanco, would have taken away the National Guard's policing powers, which at the time she felt they needed in New Orleans. But she also said that they needed the federal troops to also come, and she had asked for that. One of the things that I was quite surprised by my conversation with her was this, that um, she said to me that when General Honoré was finally sent to Louisiana to take charge of the troops in Louisiana, she asked him after they had met with everyone else, she said, General, how many troops do you have? And he said, ma'am, at this moment, a staff of 10. So he was sent without the troops, and it was still a few more days before the troops finally arrived. And I think there's a good point to be made that to mobilize the number of troops that they needed for down there took a great deal of time. And all of those people probably should have been mobilized or on alert prior to the hurricane. I think one of the big differences between what happens on the Gulf Coast with a hurricane and what happened in New Orleans was something that people predicted but not anyone, no one believed it would ever happen, which was the failure of the levees. A big difference in that when the water hits the Gulf Coast, it retreats quickly. You have lots of disaster, but it's time to get, pick, you can start picking up. New Orleans was underwater for weeks because of the failure of the levees. And that's a whole other situation of how to deal with things because you're living in a disaster for a long period of time. Well, <clears throat> given the subject matter, it's, it's interesting to me how 
apolitical the book Zaytoun often feels. It's written in about an even-handed, journalistic way as possible. It frequently references dates and specific conversations. It focuses on the particular events of the particular family. And yet in doing so, it, you know, in resisting being overly partisan or polemical or dogmatic or didactic or any of the, what I think are obvious approaches to handling this material, um, it instead very slowly builds the case that overall everything was mishandled just about as much as possible. And rather than stating that early on as a kind of thesis or suggesting that in a kind of editorial, and there's certainly no shortage of um, articles that have been written to suggest that, the book slowly attempts to persuade the reader of the, the narrative of events, and at any given moment, in any number of different chapters, ways in which multiple different decisions on multiple different levels, all the way down to the individuals and the families, all the way up through the state government and federal government, could have made a big difference, but it seems that again and again, people made bad decisions. And so rather than come out and say that this is a book about Katrina or the handling of suspected terrorists, it simply demonstrates the story of the family and lets the reader come to the conclusion, what I, what I feel is the inescapable conclusion, that the events were handled badly. I was just going to say, I think um, after reading Zaytoun, um, it makes so much sense that these troops were from Iraq because um, when you're reading the book, it's so obvious that these National Guardsmen had so much fear in them. You know, and fear can do crazy things to people. I mean, when you're under that much fear, the way that you're going to respond to these chaotic situations aren't going to be good, you know. And, you know, in the situation where uh, the National Guardsmen didn't save the, um, the pastor and his wife and just situations like that, it just seems like it was they were just trying to save themselves, you know. And they were down, it seemed like they were down there more to fight crime and, you know, get the looters in prison more than they were to rescue people, you know. And, and that makes so much sense. Coming from Iraq, they would automatically have that racial profiling, um, especially after being told that um, they need to watch out for terrorists, you know. And so Zaytun was just such a target by the time they got there. One more thing to add. Um, we as Americans are not accustomed to military police. We do not on a daily basis see um, military standing on the corner with a shotgun um, or military directing traffic with a shotgun. When, when the military comes in after a natural disaster, their culture and our culture clash, as illustrated in the book. I want to add something to that because I think that's one of the, the most difficult experiences of Katrina is returning and realizing that you're under military control, which was the situation for those of us who were citizens of New Orleans. I want to highlight the fact that the, the failure to send people was uh, part of the problem. Uh, I went into the city eight days after Katrina hit to retrieve supplies for our school because I had set up the school in another location. And I got in through those drug enforcement agents who were friends of mine. The military were just setting up camp in the uh, uh, parking garage at Loyola because I had left a car there. And I mean, literally, they were just arriving eight days after this disaster had hit the city. So they weren't organized. This, this only makes the situation worse, that the, the delay, all the conversation that took place between the governor, the mayor of New Orleans, and the president just further exasperated the situation for the citizens of New Orleans.